Hi everyone, it's Tanya Gibbs. Welcome to my channel. Today I am going to teach you a watercolor card tutorial. This is an Yvonne Blair Art Girls project. Here is a sample of the card that we're going to create today. This is the mermaid stamp by uh, Yvonne Blair and Impression Obsession. We are also going to use her Keep Room stamp from the same uh, Impression Obsession line. Uh, these stamps are available in some of your local stamp uh, retailers. If they are not, please ask them to carry them. I will also link up a blog post down below that has them linked to an online store for you to purchase them. I have started by uh, cutting a piece of cold press watercolor paper and adding it to a uh, board that I have taped down. I'm using the smooth side of the watercolor paper. The paper is a 140 pound bond. I'm using painter's tape to keep it taped down to my surface. Then I'm using the antique linen distress ink to stamp my image down. And I'm using watercolor pencils from Prima. Uh, I am also going to use a um, watercolor brush that is from Prima as well to color up my image today. So uh, I am not a watercoloring expert by any means so some of my technique may be a little uh, unorthodox for typical watercolor artists so please pardon me if I teach bad technique here but I'm going to teach you what I do and uh, some of the techniques that work best for me. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the sets from Prima, this is the uh, Soft Naturals, and this is the 09 in that set. It's a coral color, uh, and, and you could use any one's uh, watercolor pencils that you like. I just happen to like these watercolor pencils. I have an, uh, the whole set. Uh, so I'm going to start out with the, the coral color. I'm scribbling some pigment around following the lines that were given to me by Yvonne and then I'm taking my watercolor brush and I'm adding the water to it to smooth out the pigment. Um, I will confess that I, ha I found that there were better results if I added the water directly to the watercolor paper and then used the pencils on top. I just found that it was much smoother uh, and the pigment seemed to blend a little bit easier and notice that I'm only using that pencil right now and then I'll go back up to her bra area and then add a little bit of pigment there as well. So the sets that I'm going to be using a lot today are going to be the Earth Tone set, the Soft Naturals and I found that a lot of these colors were duplicated in both of these sets and then I'm also using the Hair and Skin Tone sets uh, and the Scenic Root. I'll use just a few colors from there but like I said if you have some of these colors in other watercolor sets uh, go ahead and use those as well. So this color is actually um, found in a couple of the sets. Um, so like I said, if you if you have these, I think that's the 08 number, and it's kind of a dark terracotta color. And I'm using it as my medium tone on my mermaid body. The idea here was is that I thought that my background was going to be a little more of the turquoise and blues. So I wanted my mermaid to have more of a coral color to her. So the shadows and the medium tones in her uh, body I wanted to pull out with the deeper, richer terracotta colors and keep her somewhat uh, coral colored. So uh, now what I'm doing is I'm coming in with one of the flesh tones and that's from the hair and skin tone set. That is number 05 and I'm adding that to her body areas. Now her hands come up kind of high and this is the very first time that I've ever colored her. So I'm ex um, trying to figure out where her neck is going to be. It's going to have a little bit more of a darker uh, darker brownish tone under her neck because there's a deeper shadow where her chin casts the shadow. So keep that in mind. So I'm going to use some of my browner tones in that area. For her hair, I wanted her to have a chestnut colored hair. Going back and thinking about it, I probably would have been a little more whimsical with her on a second pass and given her some really fun mermaid hair. Uh, so thinking about that next time, but for the first time I did this, I wanted to stick with traditional hair colors so that I could figure out how to color her. 
Her hair color is number 95 from the um, hair and skin tone color set from Prima. And this is a really nice chestnut color. And then I also came in with number 101, and that's just a deeper uh, chestnut color. So those are the two hair colors that I used. Um, one of them is a little more uh, reddish tone, and one of them is a, is a really deep mahogany color. Uh, and all you see me doing is flicking in color, like almost like a wisp. And I'm just following the lines that uh, were given to me by Yvonne, and just uh, going in with the light color first and then come back with some water to blend it out and then come back in with that darker color and uh, whip in some shadows around those highlights. The nice thing about watercolor is that if you add too much of one color you can always come back in with a little bit of water and lift that color off. So it's very forgiving and like your uh, Copic markers or you know those other markers you can't really pull that color back um, too easily so if you're inexperienced with coloring uh, I recommend watercolor now I'm not going to color for the sake of time and video I'm not going to color the left side of her hair I just kind of skip through this a little bit with the video to s save some time but it's the same process just go back and flick flick in the color to give it a more natural look. Um, now coming back down on her arm, um, I'm just going to drag some of that color back down into her body a little bit. Um, and that's going to provide me a nice shadow. Don't forget to go back into the negative spaces between her arm and add that back in. That's going to give um, that illusion that her arms are bent and lifted. And then go back in and add a few of those little darker colors underneath her breast, underneath her chin, um, and then that will give her some nice depth. Then I touched the tip of my marker uh, to the tip of my uh, pencils just to pick up a little bit of pigment to add to her skin tone as well. Um, the nice thing, like I said, about these watercolors is just that they're very forgiving. Add a little bit of water, you can lift that color right off. So picking up some shadows there on her fin, um, I'm just picking up pigment from her hair, really, and just t just adding that right to her tail. And notice how her tail now has a l quite a bit of dimension just by doing that. So these, there's these little pearl balls around her, and I'm just picking up one of the lighter tones of the ivory in the skin and hair, hair and skin tones from Pigma. The, uh, Prima there, you know, it's just a little ivory color um, pencil. Let me see what the color number is. It's O2, uh, and um, adding that to that, and then I'm going to come in with some of the blue. This is where the scenic root uh set comes in. I just grabbed out some of the blues and I'm just going to add those into the negative spaces. I think I used number 61 and 62 there around the negative areas around her. Liberally adding a lot of water. I'm adding the pigment to my mat, picking it up with some water, adding it down. Now hindsight going back, these colors just weren't rich enough for me. Um, in card in hand it's okay. I can really see it but the the lights are really washing it out on camera so you don't see it as well but so then I decided to pick up one of these richer pigments and add a little bit more and now you can kind of see the color a little more but I really wish this was a little darker blue um, going forward but you know first time you color it you learn and then you you move on from there so I'm just adding a little bit more pigment there around her uh, the nice thing, like I said, is that it's watercolor. You can just add more and more. So then I got to thinking about it. It would be nice to add some, some more shadows and highlights. So I came in with a purple and added that. And then I came in with a pink and added that as well um, around. And then I added a little bit of green as well. So uh, just really having some fun with some of these colors in these areas around her. Thinking if she was in the ocean, they would be blurred out because they would be out of focus, but you'd still have a lot of pops of color in there. So then off camera, I've made up a solution of water and uh, white paint and I've uh, flicked that around and I like that because it gives this illusion of bubbles as if she was breathing and then I've lifted that off with a paper towel to just kind of lift some of that water up. 
and it gives a nice bubble look and then here I go flicking some white paint around and that again gives you the look of splashed bubbles um, I always keep a, a little diluted bottle of white acrylic paint on my desk so now to give some texture to her fins I'm just gonna take a white gel pen and add some little um, little uh, little dots around on her fins they're just kind of in a small C shape I know that this is kind of zoomed out a little bit um, but you'll see the close-ups in the photos um, and on the blog post you can really see the texture uh, and I just added that all around on her body and then up on her um, breast a little bit and then of course what mermaid wouldn't be complete without a little bit of wink of Stella so I've added that for a little sparkle and shine because you know in the water she would definitely be reflective and she needs a little sparkle I know it's very hard to see that on video but she, her little fins are very sparkly and then coming back over those little balls that are there around her because I feel like those would be like little either little um balls of uh, either I don't know what they are if they would be like little breathing bubbles or if they're pearls so I just decided to add a little bit of glossy accents to them just just in case they were either one <laughs> so anyway I added that and I love the look of the glossy accents plus it gives a little bit of dimension and fun uh, I decided to keep this card somewhat simple but then it bothered me that she didn't have a face so I came back with a little bit of the red from the scenic uh, root collection and added um, a little bit of red to her and then I also added some um, coral there on her face just to give her a little bit of rouge and then decided to um, add a little bit of blue to her uh, eyes just a touch because she her face is so small it's very hard to add these little details without her getting her face getting a little bit freaky looking <laughs> I don't know it was getting a little bit complicated so then I came back and added bangs around the, at the top just to kind of hide her eyes just a bit because it was getting a little awkward for me a little bit of white also to give a little catch eye in her eye I might even be getting ahead of myself a little bit just play around with her face until you get the look that you like I mean if you're not experienced with faces I guess you could always just leave her face blank but um, I'm, I noticed the more simplistic you kept it the better it was like don't try to add too much detail but just a little small um, dots for her eyes um, and then just a small mouth and then you know swoop in that that hair and kind of add a little, bit, a little bit and keep it crazy and just let the hair cover her face as much as possible and it seemed to be fine um, like I said you don't need a whole lot of detail just an expression and you know don't forget your shadows will cover up quite a bit of it just I don't know I just I don't like face faces with no face so let's work on the inside of the card real fast I would like to note though as I'm doing this that I did not put a sentiment or a whole lot of stuff on the front of my card because I spent so much time watercoloring this card I did not want to take away from that and the sentiment on the front of the card I would like to leave that uh, open for me to add whenever I decide to give the card away and since the inside of the card is a very generic sen sentiment so I'm placing this sentiment on this piece of vellum it is uh, keep some room in your heart for the unimaginable Mary Oliver so I felt like that fit perfect with the mermaid on the cover and I wanted to put this on vellum and I wanted to uh, emboss it with the gold embossing powder and there is a trick to that to keep that vellum from buckling you have to get your heat embossing heat gun really hot and then just do it really fast uh, you know heat it up really fast so that uh, you're doing it almost like quick motions so that it doesn't warp your um, vellum so once I get that in place I have added my mermaid to the front of the cardstock this is a top folding a2 card so it's been cut to 11 inches and then um, four and a quarter and then uh, it folds at the five and a half mark and then I've cut a piece of paper 
on the inside so that I can add my sentiment. Um, and then uh, I wrapped that vellum around and glued it to the inside back flap. So there is no adhesive on the front uh, and it's now got a pocket. But I don't, I want to use it as a gift card holder and I don't want my gift card to slip through the bottom. So very uh, carefully where the sentiment is, I've added a tiny bit of glossy accents behind the words so that you don't see it. And then that way, once it's dry, my gift card won't fall out the bottom. And you'll see me slip my gift card right in there. So I have plenty of room to write a message there on the white and I can slip my gift card in and now I have a really nice card. And I can hand write a sentiment there under my uh, Little Mermaid, like thank you or happy birthday, anything I like there on the front and I have a nice spot for a gift card on the inside. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. There's the close-ups of the card. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, very quick and simple. Um, if you decide to create a project using this tutorial, please uh, share it with me in social media using hashtag YB uh, art girls so that I can see what you guys are creating using these fun stamps uh, projects I would love to see that and also hashtag following Tanya Gibbs so that I can see that as well so uh, thanks again and don't forget to go visit that blog post I will put a link down below in the description box for you guys and again if you have enjoyed this please leave me a thumbs up a comment and don't forget to share this with a friend